And we're back, and thank you for tuning in here at the Spinning Wheel Complex. It's Mr. Magic with Backstage, and my guest today is Mr. Slick. Now, just before the break, uh, again, we were talking about how we had teamed up and uh, we were moving forward as Mr. Magic and Mr. Slick. And as time went forward and work got even more, uh, that we didn't actually break up. But we just went, not our separate ways to say, but we went and took on other jobs just to yes. cover that, you know, people wanted us and they wanted you, they yes. wanted me, and, you know, it just worked out fine. It did. Now, now, in this, um, I had been uh, performing as well as you uh, from being overseas. Um, you know, we go places and we always, always have magic tricks on us. You know, I, I know this because one thing we've, we learned as being magicians, to be a full magician, you always got to have a magic trick on you because you never know when somebody will walk up on you and no say, where you just are. show me something. Yes. And it's happened. Here yes. in Bermuda, you know, uh, I, I recall times, <laughs> like I said, just walking through town. Someone says, hey, Mr. Magic, show me a trick. So I know this has happened to you. And, yes. and in the bars that you've worked at, uh, Casey's Lounge, for example, uh, and uh, of course, Disco 40, as we talked about, where we really honed our craft, mm -hmm. we also got an opportunity uh, to travel overseas uh, to perform. So the backstory on that, folks, is uh, some, some years ago, uh, I had an opportunity to go to Baltimore to the Ronald McDonald House. Uh, if you all don't know what that is, that is like a halfway house for folks that go to the uh, the hospital uh, there in Baltimore, which is John Hopkins. Yes. Uh, this is where the children stay and the families stay uh, before they transition into the hospital. You're talking about kids that are getting uh, brain surgery, uh, the uh, cancer, uh, uh, cancer treatment, treatments leukemia. and leukemia and all sorts of things. So I had an opportunity to perform for them. And after the performance uh, and, and, and performing for these children, it really, really touched me that uh, when the folks came to me to give me a paycheck, I gave it back to them and told them, you know what, you use that money to help these children. And, they, and I always said that I will go back, that I will go back to John yes. Hopkins and go back to Ronald McDonald House to perform. So when the opportunity came to do that, I took my friend with me. Yes. So let's talk about that experience, uh, well, starting yeah. from the flight to <laughs> New York. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, it was a good flight. It yeah. was a short flight. Uh, we rented a car and we proceeded, GPS, we proceeded to drive to Baltimore. Wow, folks, let me tell you, sometimes GPS and the turning you're supposed to make <laughs> really does not match. We ended up in neighborhoods that we thought we was not going to get out of. Oh, yes, uh, but yes, yes. unlikely, there were some good people in that neighborhood who showed us the right way. Basically told us, get out in a hurry. Yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> we did not belong around there. Yes. Uh, this one, the one Jewish, when we in that Jewish neighborhood. Yes. That, I, I must say, that gentleman was very, very kind. And, uh, you know, the look in his eyes told us everything. He's like, well, you are lost, but you need to get out of here now. You know, and directed us to, and, uh, you know, to And he more. directed us the right way. Uh, we made that journey. Nice, long journey. Yeah. But... It was a safe journey. We reached our destination, and Mr. Magic had been there before. I had not. And trust me, when he said that it touched him, I can agree with that. Yeah, I, I, can I, totally did, I did warn you. I can totally agree with I, that. I, it, I told him before. It was yeah. a touching, but we were there for a reason, and we had to put that aside. And we got to the people. They showed us where we can change up and set up, and we did that. They brought the kids and the parents down. Now, one thing I must do is I also must thank tourism, Bermuda Tourism, because I went to them and they gave us the little Oh, yes, the, trinkled, uh, the trinkets bracelet, and the bracelets and, and different kinds of things. Bermuda, Bermuda to take the pins, pins, coloring books and crayons, and the kids went wild over that. Yeah. Uh, with, uh, as lo along with our performance, the kids, they loved us. Yeah. They actually loved us. And it was a good to do something. And people say, well, who gave you the idea? Why, why did you guys do that? And I said, well, we talked about it. And we decided to do something from the heart. And that's what we done. Yeah, and we did that. Now, uh, I said earlier, uh, off, off camera, that we were going to throw somebody under the bus. Okay, <laughs> A good friend of ours, very yes. good friend of ours. Uh, getting into Baltimore, we had made arrangements to stay uh, with a friend of ours in, in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. So we could stay there and then we can go back to New York, uh, you know, the, um, and for a couple of days, you yes. know, and go back to catch our flight. Uh, we were at the venue, we had finished, and we were standing out in the parking lot. We made the phone call. 
And <laughs> it's, it's so funny because we were all planning. We were, Mr. Magic and I was planning on where we were going to go that evening with this friend, what we were going to go out and eat to dinner. We were going to take him out and have a good evening, boys' night out. And when we called him after the show, <laughs> his answer was, I'll call you right back. We waited a half an hour. We called him back again. And his second reply was, he was in Bermuda. He had never left. <laughs> he, had ne he left us stranded in Baltimore. <laughs> so because we had nowhere to stay that night, we journeyed uh, to another friend of ours, uh, Mr. Lynn Darrell. Yes. And we drove to Virginia. Norfolk, Virginia. Yeah, we drove to Virginia. And we hung out there in Virginia for a couple of days and then made that long trek back to New York to, uh, to get back home. And then we, we spent the night in New York uh, in Times Square. We had a great time. And again, while we're there, magic tricks on us, performing places Everywhere that we, we went. Go. Uh, Everywhere Planet we Hollywood, go. Planet Hollywood. Maybe in Planet Ooh. Hollywood, doing <laughs> tricks at the bar, you know, uh, you know, for the folks there. Now, in doing this, like I said, we, we've traveled. You know, we've been up and down the East Coast and everywhere we've gone, we perform magic. Yes. Now, here in Bermuda, there have been a lot of things and a lot of places, I should say, a lot of places that you have performed. Like we've had contracts with uh, uh, the Mid Ocean Club, uh, with um, um, Riddles Bay and, and, and the hotels and things like that. Do you see or do you feel that as far as the hotel industry is concerned, do you feel that there is a place for uh, a magic show to be in the hotels on a regular basis? Most definite. Most definite. And I still say to myself nowadays, why doesn't Bermuda have a magician in the hotel? I've seen in the past years, and Mr. Magic can vouch, we've been through to the uh, film festival to put our, portray our magic to them to be in the film festival. We've been to hotels and said, you know, we would like to be hired. We would do a show for free. And if you like it, you can hire us. They did not hire us, but they would bring in a magician. That didn't deter us. We, we are local magicians, and we serve the local public 100%. Yes. We do the best that we can for the local public. We sometimes we even bring down, come down on our prices to please just to assist yeah, just to yeah. assist because we know people. yeah because we know in this economic time that uh, a lot of people really can't afford some of the amenities that they used yes. to afford and we we know this yes. you know we know this Being and we family do, and we have, ourselves yeah. yes and we do negotiate so we prices do, yes. you know, Most definitely. That. i mean it's a part it's what you do for your people the peer and these are the people that have supported us yeah. over the last Years, so many plus years. 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 Uh, you see, you see, you see the grains. <laughs> yeah, we, we've been doing this, uh, doing this a while. Now, and again, let's get back to uh, to the magic and, and your, your your process uh, of continuing on in this craft, in this art form. Now, like with myself, I find myself every day I'm practicing magic. What about you? Then I can yes. Before I go to bed, sitting in the bed, supposed to be watching TV, yeah. but I'm practicing. I'm practicing certain moves. I'm practicing certain moves. Magic is a craft that cannot be taken lightly and cannot go without practice. Without practice. Okay. And on that note, folks, we'll be back after this talking with Mr. Slick a little bit more. And at the end of the show, and I'm hoping you got something for us to show our audience uh, a little bit later on. As you said earlier, a magician is never without a trick. Always got a trick. Always All right. Got a trick. We'll be back right after this.